we're laughing when we start, but today we're just we're just we're just sweating. We're just sweating. Know, what's happening? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know this what's is happening. Very <laughs> unusual. Very um, Ken was even complaining. That's quite something. I feel like I need a fainting couch. Was he? Yes, he actually was complaining. That's he doesn't it. complain. No. I actually saw beads of sweat on his brow. Which we have right now. Yeah. I forgot We're to put glowing. lipstick on. It's, I didn't know what to wear. Yeah. I didn't do my hair. Yours is just going to be, you're going to look like Peter Frampton by the end. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the old Peter Frampton. Young Peter Frampton, not Peter Frampton now. Frampton Comes Alive album cover. That's yeah. my That's my humidity hair go-to when yeah. I'm trying to, if, yeah. and if you know what I'm talking about. You're our age. Uh, <laughs> I just had my birthday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was Kim's birthday a few days ago. Yeah. yeah. Ken has informed me that I now can get seniors discounts at McDonald's and Value Village. <laughs> oh, gosh. As if I'm going to ask for it. Nobody would believe you. Well, that's good. He gets offered them without saying anything. Yeah. So, oh yeah, they, so we're Jennifer and Kim from Peace oh, yeah, and Harmony right. and Prince Edward the Island. The complainers. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be an odd one because we're yeah. really uncomfortable. Yeah, oh. yeah, it feels like our brains are going to explode. Yeah, and I think we might probably get deliriously silly right. at some point. Anyway, it's just okay. an extreme heat warning. It's fine. Yes. Yeah, we'll be good. Okay, and we have no AC as customer, a customer has oh, yeah. helpfully pointed out today. I actually felt bad for customers, mm -hmm. and there were actually shops and restaurants that closed yes. that didn't have AAC, yeah. AFC, <laughs> AAC uh, because it wasn't comfortable for our clients. Yeah, and it was so, 89 back in the mill where we were working. Yeah. In your section. I have a feeling right. standing over the propane dying batch, Yeah, it was slightly hotter than yeah, that. And that's what bit. I did all day. A little bit. Drank tons of water. So we will do a proper introduction. Okay, go ahead. We're Kim and Jennifer from Fleece and Harmony Mill, Woolen Mill in Belfast, Prince Edward Island, Canada. You're watching this on August 2nd or sometime after that. Because yeah. we launched it on August 2019. 2nd. And we're sisters. Yes. That's right. Yes. Some yes. people didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah, and That's I also what, want to say to the people, well, we had one really funny comment last episode that said I, it was clear that I don't have children, although it's possible Kim might have. And I just want to say that I spent the last three days babysitting. Ironically, that comment came. Three children, and yeah. one of them was a one-year-old boy. Right. I did have some help, but we got along quite well, and they all are still alive. That's the main thing. Yeah, that's what matters. But I think it's more to the point, did you enjoy it? I actually was very good with them. We had fun. Okay. I mean, the eleven-year-old boy was on his Xbox. Okay. And the and the seven-year-old girl was so super helpful. My oh. niece's daughter, she's wonderful. Oh, we had a good. good time. Yeah. We cleaned up her room. There's nothing like hanging out in a little girl's room. Really? The princess bed. Oh. The clothes. Oh. The cute, adorable oh. outfits. I wanted every one of them. She's very little, though. None of them would fit. It was, I, I was helping her put her laundry out, and I was like, oh, a jumpsuit with palm trees? Uh, <laughs> I want this. <laughs> anyway, it was very fun. And all the hair thingies, and the, it was great. Yeah, so I'm thinking yeah. that probably one-year-old boys weren't quite your thing, but you survived. He's cute, too. Yeah. Yeah. She's, yeah, she's definitely a very girly girl, so I yeah. can kind of relate yeah, to that. So really she, she's got the bed and all the Some thing that I would have tracked wanted to attract her. Going going yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I, all the windows open. I actually okay. was, spent the, a few days with children, so yeah. there you go. Yeah, so there and lived to tell the tale. And I think that if you're not getting along with them, they're very cranky and unreasonable. So yes. it's, it's obviously that we we connected or it would have been much more difficult. Uh, yes, great. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So, and Jennifer was there because our lovely niece had to have surgery. Yes. And so she was helping out for a couple of days, which meant that I was here with Ken. We were, Ken and I were here by ourselves in the farm and there were quite a few things that happened that I didn't even, we didn't even really get a chance to catch we up. We haven't on. had a chance to talk at yeah. all. So you're going to hear I some got home of them. at 11 last night. Yeah. So we're going to, you're going to hear some of it for the first time tonight. Yeah, but I want to say I took the 9 o'clock crossing from Nova Scotia for the first right. time last night because I wanted to allow as much time as possible, but still had to be back here today to um, do all this, get caught up. And uh, I was out, it was still 24 degrees. If you saw our Instagram stories, you know I took the ferry at 9 last night, but it was the most beautiful sunset. Yeah. 
incredible. Right. And then um, I went up to the, I was on the holiday island, no ice cream. Oh dear. My God. Why yeah. does, why does the ferry company hate me? Why am I always <laughs> on the no ice cream one? Anyway, well they have ice cream, but they don't have cow's ice cream. Yes. And right. cow's ice cream, if you haven't had it. That's the bomb. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. You need to have it somewhere. Yeah. So anyway, um, I went up to the upper deck, mm -hmm. which has long benches, and I laid on it, and I made a pillow out of the wrap I thought I'd need. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I just laid up there watching the stars come out, oh. you know, when they multiplied over the course of the crossing because oh, it's uh, 75 minutes. It was wonderful. There wasn't a soul on the boat. Oh. I'm afraid they lost money on that crossing, right. but... It, it was so peaceful. It was like your own little private cruise. It was like my own little private cruise. Right. Yeah, so that I recommend that crossing. And you had lots of time to admire the stars because you forgot your knitting. Oh my gosh, I'll just explain later. Yes. Someone gets I went away way. for three days without knitting and I realized that I actually am addicted to knitting now. Oh, okay. Yeah, it you was... can't miss it. It was like, like it was bad. I obviously was there to support my niece and I was right. very concerned about her health and everything, but the number of times I mentioned that I forgot my knitting, she was actually... Hi, so I'm in the hospital, so can we get past the knitting thing? If I had to hear that you forgot your knitting one more time? Yeah. But when I left, my mom had said, you won't be getting any knitting done with the yeah. one-year-old, so don't worry about oh, it. But as it turns out, tractor. it's hasty. <laughs> as it turns out, I had tons of time to knit because I had spent the entire trip sitting in a hospital room, which right. wasn't exactly planned. But right. Everything's fine. But yeah, oh, so okay. I, I didn't think I'd get to knit that much. But as it turns out, I probably could have finished a sweater right. in the amount of free time I had. The, but. the sweater that you didn't finish that we'll talk about. In yes, week. because I forgot it. Yes. <sighs> okay. Okay. So uh, there's a couple things. We want to remind you to like, uh, give us a thumbs up if you like us. Yeah. And to subscribe. Yes, subscribe to subscribe. our channel. We're very yeah. excited because after the last episode, we passed a milestone, which we posted over all the social media stuff. So we had we are over two thousand subscribers yeah. now, which is really exciting. Yes, it, our yeah. hearts are full. Yeah, it's yeah. it's wonderful just to think. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Yeah, that's great. It's yeah, really so good. thank you all. We really, really appreciate the support, and we yeah. do have a ton of fun doing this. So yes. we definitely uh, love the encouragement to keep going. Right, and we yeah. have lots of people visiting the store that yes. watch the podcast, and uh, it's just been really good chatting. And so, all for all of you that have already visited. We're really happy that you made it out to see yeah. us, and uh, there's still more coming, I think. Cause yeah, and it's yeah. so nice when people arrive, they feel like they know you, right. and you, you know, it's just, it creates sort of a different level of connection. It's right. wonderful. Yeah, and we had eight people for knit night. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so that's good, so that's fun. Yeah. So people were asking me about knit night that were not here for knit night, from people that were here visiting oh. as well. So Are they yes. coming? Well, no, they were already here, but they missed it. Oh. So you'd have to come back darn. again. Yeah, if you're okay. traveling in the area, try to make our knit night. Yeah. It's so fun. Really Monday's fun. at 6.30. Right. Till 8.30. Yeah, and or that was without me there. Yeah. yeah. So that was, it was a, it was a, well, there's more room. There's yeah. more room for eight people, than eight people. But yeah. It was, it was more than what we usually have. Right. So that's good. So uh, in today's episode, we're going to do the same kind of thing that we usually do, but we're changing the order a little bit, and you'll know why when we get there, but we'll do the farm update because Jen hasn't been updated for a couple days. Um, we also have three uh, Ask Us Anything questions, and one of them I have to apologize because she actually, I, she, we should have answered it in the last episode, but that one was kind of a short, a short one, so we didn't get a chance, so we'll answer those questions. Um, there, are, there is an FO, finished object. Yeah, part two. Part two. And, Fully uh, finished. Yeah, and we do have uh, works in progress. Uh, I'm not going to show my Joe Bats arm, I said in the last episode, unless there's something significantly different to look right. at. I'm not going to show it, but I have continued to it's knit on it. It's gone way of the brown, wild, and reckless heart sweater for the time being. No. Well, no, you're I'm still working. Yeah, I'm still working on it. But I have a, a rest project right. between, which I'm going to show. Okay. And uh, we've got quite a lot going on in the shop. So we are going to have a shop update. Uh, we have an interview, which is a really exciting one. And uh, then we have uh, something very special to show you after that. Bye. So with the farm update, the most important and thing that happened is that we got our hay in since the yeah. last time we filmed, I think. 
No, I think we had it in. We were hoping you was coming. Oh, or we were hoping you was coming. I yeah. don't remember. It was got I a little tough. I remember the celebratory wine spritzer. That's all I yes. remember. Yes, <laughs> the celebratory <laughs> wine spritzer. So we, the hay is in. It's all safe. And people are still cutting. Actually, some people now are cutting second cut because there was kind of a range. The hay in the area was ready probably a full two weeks before we got ours in. Um, but then there was rain, so if you didn't get it in, there was a small window of time. If you didn't get your hay in, then you had to wait. Then you had to dry it up a bit. Till it dried up a bit. So we were on the really the tail end of the yeah. whole thing, and uh, now people are cutting hay for second cut. And yeah. hopefully the rain so far so good. There it's rain and sun and rain and sun. So uh, it got a little dry this week, but there's rain in the forecast, so that's good. So we're hoping to get a second it's cut not as well. tonight. I don't know. How I'm gonna sleep. Yeah. But even there is, it is gonna rain tonight, but not not enough to uh, cool off anything. Thank goodness. Yeah. So we won't. We would hate to be comfortable. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> okay. So we'll. Uh, so there's a, a note here that we'll have to talk about skunks. So. Oh. Um, as you have heard, if you've been following us before, that there, we have a little, few little skunks around. Um, however, and we, I should say that the farm is right next to a senior's home. I so, really like where this is going. Yeah, so there's a senior's home <laughs> that is on the other side of our driveway. So there's a lady from the senior's home that walks down our driveway for her oh. walk. And I think she walks in slippers because every morning you can yeah. hear. <laughs> 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 so, so she comes down to our big linden tree that we, that we have, which is basically right under my bedroom window. And then you hear <laughs> <laughs> all the way back. So every morning at six o'clock at six o'clock. So... You Just kind of, so nobody feels bad, we're already awake by that. Yes. yes. So you get kind of in a routine. Oh, oh there she is. Okay. <laughs> that means that the with the squish, squish, squish of the sneaker or the slippers means that the coffee is already brewed. Okay. So Ken it's goes wonderful. and gets us a okay. coffee in the morning. Anyway, so I'm laying in bed <laughs> as normal, and then dead silence, and then <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Nothing, and then <laughs> so I got up out of bed and I looked out the window because Thinking someone might be having a stroke or something. something God help us. us! So she had quick, quick, quick all the way up <laughs> the driveway by the time I looked out. But when I looked out, I looked on the our pasture is there, and there's a I mean the stupid things that you know. Anyway, there's a tire track in the grass that hasn't grown grass over it but there was something else before the tire track. So I couldn't see, cause I couldn't see that far. And when I got the binoculars out, I could see that there was something there, but I didn't know what yeah. it was, but it wasn't moving. Yeah. It's funny so, we have binoculars in every room. Yeah. I think that's a country thing. Yeah, cause you need to watch where the, <laughs> where the animals do. <laughs> Why are they buying? Yeah. yeah. What bird is that? Yeah. <laughs> them all the time yeah. what's Edith doing now no I'm just kidding <laughs> definitely never for that no. <laughs> never <laughs> it might work the other way from different places but we, no, we, we just train it on animals <laughs> yeah. mostly so anyway wildlife okay so back to uh, yeah, back to true. our walker so uh so when Ken come, came up with the coffee I said the walker was out but I think she saw something on the side of the pasture. So he immediately had to twitch the curtain open and look and see <laughs> and see what it was. And he goes, it looks like it's black. Do you think it's an animal? And I said, I don't know. I said, but I guess we won't find out until we get ready to go. He goes, hell no. We're, I'm going out <laughs> to see. So he actually went out. I don't, I don't know if he put on, it was in his underwear still or not, but anyway, we live in the country. So <laughs> he went, he went out and he came back, he was gone for a while and then he came back and it was actually a skunk dead, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, unfortunately. That's odd. Yes. I think it was killed by the fox. So, oh, well, so, things are but, just getting awfully yes, savage around here. But there was here. a big tuft of hair. So we actually think that the, the lady that was walking that it was actually over. She went down and looked at it and she tossed it to the side. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> there are tough breed farm girls. <laughs> yeah. There are tough breed around here. Anyway, Ken got a feed bag and gathered it up. 
And he said that it looked like it had been attacked by something, but whoever attacked it, so if it was the fox, some foxes are smart, others aren't. It actually started from the wrong end. So I think that's well, why... I'm I... wondering if foxes actually stink or if they just hunt skunks all the time. I don't know. No, I foxes do stink. Yeah. Anyway, this one started at the wrong end. Oh. So dropped his prey. Right. So the, the poor little skunk was there. But it wasn't the one that sprays Canada okay. in the dog. It wasn't the all black one no. with the white hat. And we called it Ernest. Ernest. Yes. <laughs> so Ernest is still here. It was like a juvenile uh, juvenile skunk. Well, that's just a shame. Yeah. Well, it, can't everybody just live here in peace? Yes, yes, exactly. So that was funny. But the funny part was is that the lady took it off our drive. Took it off the driveway and checked it. Just, she wasn't bothered. <laughs> 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 so that was it. That's good. So, and then there was another story, but I'll tell you that when I get to my whip. About a skunk? No. Oh, no, something else. Okay. 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 So, that's it. So, that's the that's <sighs> the story. So, then, and now it's been three days since that happened. So, the quick, quick, quick is back to normal every day. So, an yes. easy trip down and an easy trip yeah. back with no distractions. So, she's really providing a service. Yes. <laughs> it's like <laughs> coffee's ready, roadkill cleanup. Yeah. That's right. That's great. It's all, all for the very small amount of taxes I pay. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Anyway, okay. Better, better service than, than in some state. Was it Toronto where that poor raccoon stayed on the sidewalk? Oh my the gosh, for... so funny. Yeah. But look it up. It was on the sidewalk, the raccoon, and they've started a memorial, and, and then yeah. it was like a shrine, and then it was yeah. like, oh my god. Then it, it went funny. viral. Yeah. So, anyway, so that's it. Not, it wouldn't happen here. No, you got to take it. Got to clean up crew yeah. around here. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that. Okay. So, um, and then I was going to talk about the weather, but we already jumped right to the yeah. weather because we're it's feeling very, it. Yeah, it's we're feeling very it. present. So the next thing is the ask us anything. Okay. So, um, some I have to say that some of these rivalry names, you get mixed up because they they're all like. Like this is uh, the first one. It took me a while to figure out. What I know. I'm sorry. Because because I wanted to say Ida. But it's actually novel idea. Yeah. I don't know what her, her real name, name is, is yeah. but it's novel idea, which is really cute. Yeah. Because you, your eyes tend to go to the letters that look like a name. Yeah. I know. And so then, you would be like, novel idea. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for submitting your question. Yes, that's exactly what I was saying. <laughs> so novel, I mean, novel <laughs> idea wants to know, because uh, we talked about the fiber trail, where yeah. the best home base is if yeah. you're going to travel around the, fi the fiber trail. So the first thing that I would say is you understand how big the island is. Yeah. So I would say that, um, and that this is not a, okay, it's, I don't know how long it would take you to actually drive tip to tip. Longer than you would think. Yes. Probably. It's, I think it's, it's 300 three. kilometers. Maybe. Oh God, we should probably know this. Oh yeah. Whatever. Okay. So we'll post, <laughs> we'll post it how long it is, but, um, it's not really like a straight shot. So it takes probably, you could drive from tip to tip. I would think in like five, five hours or something. Yeah, maybe? I think so. And it's think like so. 80 for the most part. Yeah. 80 yeah, kilometers an hour, which yeah. would be, I don't know how many miles. And some of the roads are, you know, it's, uh, just double, lane, like not yeah. double lanes, single lanes yeah. and stuff like and that. And then if so. you get caught behind some farm equipment. Yes. Hey, could times, be slightly hey, more. Yeah, it could be. So, yeah. however, Charlottetown is sort of central. Yes. Summerside is a little bit to the west. So those right. are the two biggest cities. Yeah. And, um, if you're, if you're plan a lot of people actually, what they do is they stay, if they're going to be here for a few days, they stay somewhere closer to the western part of the island. So, um, like where we were with Janet at Green Gable Alpacas, that's that's not far to drive if you're staying in Summerside or Kensington. Right. Um, it is a bit of a drive from here because yes. we're on the other side of yeah, Charlottetown. Yeah, we're like southeast. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. right. Um, <laughs> a lot of people also stay on the North Shore, yes. but that's the, that's the like Rustico and Cavendish yeah. and it, it's a real hot tourist hotspot yeah. there. So, um, just depends on people with children. Yeah. That's, that's where you yeah. probably want to be. Yeah. Anna Green Gables is there and everything. But yeah. if you stay in, in, um, in Charlottetown, you're pretty central. Yeah. Even though it's kind yes. of skewed to the eastern yeah. end of the island. Yeah. The only big trip is really to do Janet and McCausland. So yes. you would do probably, they're the two that are really up that way. Yeah. In, and and we could, say up west here. Up west. So if it's you stay down east and up west, yeah. please don't get it confused. Yeah. 
yeah. there's only one town, and that's the city. Yeah. <laughs> So when we go <laughs> when we go to town, we're actually we're going, going to Charlottetown. City. Yeah, which is the city. Which is the city. And I'm assuming the people where Summerside is the closer city. That's also town for them. I don't know. I don't know. The, Charlottetown might be the only town. Yeah, it's a city. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not the only city. <laughs> there are <laughs> other cities and other towns. So when I first moved here, they were like, "Oh, you can get it in town." I was like, "Montague?" They're yeah. like, "No, town." Yeah. <laughs> and then you feel like, okay, okay, I just moved from Ontario. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you catch on pretty quick, but yes. we're giving you the inside scoop. Yeah, so Charlottetown you, is town. Yeah, that's town. Don't know about Summerside. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. So, Someone will comment, I'm sure, and clarify if right. Summerside is town. If you're out in the of west. town. Yeah. <laughs> if you're in the west, if you're in the east, Charlottetown, we don't know. So uh, it's not that big of a place. And the, for the most part, there's not that much traffic, except right in, they're doing a lot of road work right now in Charlottetown. So well, you all get, across Canada. Yeah, so you get stuck a little bit in, when you're in town, you get stuck in traffic. Yeah. But it's really, you know, in the broad scheme of things, if you've traveled in other provinces and stuff, it's all pretty yeah. close. Yeah, and most of the destinations are pretty central. Yes. Like, they kind of go around town. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, so, but if you really don't want to drive like any distance during the days and stuff like that, then that's what a lot of people do. They actually stay, stay somewhere in the Western part and then they stay a couple of days down in the yeah. Eastern part or in Charlottetown. And, um, Charlottetown is a really cute city. Like yeah. it's, it's, uh, lots of good restaurants and stuff. Yeah. yeah it's, yeah. it would be a fun place to be. But the one thing that you have to check out is that there's lots of good restaurants in places where you would never expect yeah. a restaurant, like in pretty rural places. Yeah. There's some excellent, excellent restaurants. Yeah. So, and if anyone okay. comes to see us, we're more than happy to make recommendations. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And near us, the place to go yeah. is the Point Prim Chowder House. Right. Best five dining minutes experience. from us. Ten minutes. Ten from minutes us. from us. Yeah. yeah, it's wonderful. And it's uh, it actually made it on. I think we talked about this. It's been before, on a lot of lists. Bucket list. Yeah. For twenty one things to put on your bucket list and like yeah. so it's very because you're lovely. dining right on the ocean. Yes. Yeah. And Literally, the food is excellent. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's very fresh seafood. Yeah. Yeah. It's very good. If you don't eat seafood. They have other things too. But yes. Yeah. I mean, well, you can't complain about dying, di dining, <laughs> dying, yeah. dining sunset on the ocean yeah but and you definitely do have to reserve ahead they're often booked four or five days ahead right yeah or more yeah yeah so uh and they, they do try to accommodate as much as possible but it's small it's yeah. pretty small and because everybody wants to eat outside yeah because it's really really gorgeous yeah. so the best home base that we i don't know that are you completely confused now? <laughs> <laughs> no idea, yeah. but stay somewhere central yeah and then you can branch in the middle out. in the yeah. middle you can branch out from there yeah so, uh, and I think there's 21 things on the fiber trail. I haven't counted for this year. I don't something know. Something like yeah. that. So there's all, there's all kinds of yeah. little shops and stuff. Yeah. So, so there's lots to do. Um, and then here's, uh, I don't know, what do you think about this one? Rita J Y. Yeah. You'd say the last two letters. Not yeah. Rita J G. Rita J Y. No. I don't know. I think Rita J Y. Rita J Y. Okay. We're going with that. Okay. Any plans for 100% wool DK weight? Because we made the DK weight with the 50-50 yeah. alpaca wool blend. So really yeah. with the special pumpkin and whatever. Yes. Yeah. So you happen to be in luck because I messed up a batch. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be a permanent thing. But uh, I actually messed up a batch of Aaron and I spun it too thin. So we will have a, we're going to have, it's quite a large batch. Yeah, it's not as big as you think. It was like under 30. So what we're going to do with it, so if anybody wants to just uh, stay tuned for that, maybe, I don't know what we can do, but um, I don't know if you can see the envelope next to Jennifer. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that pattern, um, actually you pick the, the sizing for the pattern by the gauge that you can knit. So there's all different gauges. So the uh the dk that i made by mistake will it would actually be perfect for that mm -hmm. uh, for that pattern because you'll just have to knit your swatch and pick the pick the gauge and uh, we're going to do it in the uh fiddlehead which is what you see there and yeah, i'm only doing the two 
Okay. Because there wasn't enough to do three colors. Okay, so, yeah. so Fiddlehead and Bramble. Yeah. Yeah, so two two of our most popular variegated. Yeah. Um, and we've seen it this knit in both of those. It's absolutely stunning. Yeah. So we're going to do a little special with that. And then after that, I don't know if we'll do a DK... We do do it from time to time. Yeah. So usually when we do, um, so and that's a hundred percent wool, mm -hmm. our wool. And usually when we're doing a special, uh, a special spinning, a special batch, we usually do it finer. Than, yeah. And yeah. Rita, if you're watching, which I'm sure you are, hopefully, um, let us know what you what DK means to you, because ours yeah. is 185 yards per hundred grams. Yes. That's what we're talking Correct. about. Yes. But our the other ones that we've categorized as DK have been a little bit finer, or you yeah. know, so it just t give us your wish. Yeah, we'll see. we don't know. Yeah. Uh, Who knows what we might do? Right yeah, now. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just crazy like yeah. that. <laughs> so then the final question was, um, so I know because I looked it up on her profile. Her name is Terry, but okay. it's Ter Terrick. T E R E G, yeah, Ravelry name, yeah, yeah, it's Terry. Anyway, okay. hi Terry. Okay, <laughs> and uh, she says that it seems like we get along pretty well, but yeah. do we have squabbles like sisters have? <laughs> uh, yes, of course we, we do. We don't bicker. No, we actually like each other. Yeah, so we don't bicker. No, but we get yeah, we have fights. Well, I would say we have fights. We both uh, work very hard, yeah. and we can get testy. Yeah. And if we both happen to be testy on the same day, yeah. you get a squabble. Yeah. I would say. Right. We don't go out of our way to like make a point with each other. Like, no. We don't typically... We're kind of like opposites in a lot of ways. But It's so like simpatico. Kind of, like just, yeah. Yeah. And we don't... I've been around sisters that pick at each other all the time. Yeah. Like squabble. Or not squabble, but what I would call bickering. Yeah. And we don't do that. Really? No. We're busy. We're, and we're not bitter or petty people. Yeah. So it just doesn't... And we're not like envy... We don't have like envy or sibling rivalry or no. any of that. No. I don't know why that is. We're we have been known apart, to roll so. our eyes by times. No. Oh. That must have been behind my back. <laughs> oh, you're assuming it's just me. <laughs> there, now we're going to squabble right now. <laughs> Anyway, it's kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> At one point, we were because even when I when we first moved here, we worked yeah uh, part time and we worked together yeah lived together yeah rode together right rode horses uh, took lessons together yeah socialized together right I mean we're together a lot eight meals together yes every night yeah like we really did heavy exposure and it was fairly non significant yeah but the stress level gets higher of course you're going to squabble yeah. more. In fact, we actually were asked, uh, because people are interested in our story, and we were asked to do uh, like a little thing for like a documentary reality. A radio documentary. Yeah, yeah reality thing. And so we, uh, the person that was doing the proposal asked us some questions, and we answered it and whatever, and so she made her pitch, and then she came back to us and said, yep, so they're interested, but they want to know, like, like they want, like, you guys fighting and yeah. stuff like that. We said no. Like real sisters of the fiber mill. Yeah. Belfast edition. Yeah. No. No. Boring. Yeah. Boring to us. And so, just not what we're. Yeah, we 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 don't do it. So it's not uh, it wasn't authentic. That's for sure. So, so the, <laughs> that would be a lot of wasted film. Yeah. Um, or, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So the answer is. Not as much as you might think, yeah. I guess. And probably and, a lot less than most this year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's the answer to that. So okay. And we, we don't pick at each other, so that's, no. that makes it less. And we're busy. Yeah. Like, we're really busy. Yeah, and we have yeah. a shared vision. So, yeah. I mean, we share a lot of the same values and yeah. vision about most things. So yeah. we're opposites in work personalities. Yeah. But... Less so in personal personalities, right. but in the work case, that's actually a benefit yes. because I forget things. Kim reminds me, I don't want to do what she does, like the math of spinning and stuff, and she the probably technical, wouldn't be more technical inventing all the colors that I do. And yeah. it's just yeah. you need both oh. skill sets, and yeah. it would be yeah. odd to find them in the same person. I would say, yeah. And it's funny because I, my university degree was in science, so I have like that science kind of analytical mind. Right. Not very creative, really, but. 
for the most part. Yeah. I, I have to work hard to be spontaneously creative. Right. That's how I would describe it. Okay, <laughs> okay I'm going to think of an idea. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's hard work. Yeah. Whereas you are can't inspired. stop them. Yeah, yeah, can't stop. Yeah. So, uh, so that's why it works, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a really long answer to a short question. But. Now we're uh, we're back to knitting. So we're gonna show your bearish bear why again. Oh. Okay. Then I I don't think I can put it on. Okay. That was the plan. Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna take some close up photos of some of the finishing details. But what yeah. I did, it wasn't completely finished last time. I love it, but look at how beautifully smooth it's blocked out now. Yes, so gorgeous. what I did was I went back and I steam blocked it a little in some really important areas like right here. Right. So this is now nice and smooth. Right. And even this is the beginning of round for the um, color work. So it was a little bit of a bulge, like a beginning of round would be when you're adding all of these colors in and out right. and ends are woven in. It came out perfect. I finished my two crochet lines, which is one thing I really want to show a detailed picture mm -hmm. of. I did get faster on the second one, I think, although it was a quite a period of time between the two. Right. If it's not playing well in the light, just so you know, the top is a light blue November sky and the bottom is, is the pearl gray. Mm -hmm. And you will see it again, and I'm, I'm hoping to get photographs of it, um, like a, me wearing it. Um, but I can't put it on tonight. I'll never recover. I'll yeah. have heat stroke. <laughs> and uh, I had planned to take some while I was in Nova Scotia, but if that visit didn't exactly go according to plan, and just so that everybody here knows, if you missed it on Instagram, we now have kits for right. this. So I've just listed another um, eight. Mm -hmm. So there's eight kits available. And you get all you need to do this color work band because otherwise you'd be buying like eight colors. Right. Um, and you get exactly what you need to do the gray and the, the mm -hmm. blue, the main part of the sweater. So, and they're quite reasonably priced. It's in our Elden Lace, of course. And uh, they've been selling really well. And mm -hmm. uh, that will probably be the final eight for a little bit. And then we're going to have to <laughs> make something else yeah. for a bit because it's been creating a lot of yarn to keep up with the kit right. um, demand from Jennifer's pattern launch. And now we're sort of launching the kits on here. And it's been a brisk sales <laughs> yes. yeah. uh, of the Bear Schwa kit because uh, it's a beautiful sweater. Yeah. And it's yeah. a big advantage to be able to have just the yarn, yeah, enough yarn for that. Yeah, because there's six there's, colors in here, I think. Yeah, it's be, a, yeah. they're 500 yard, yard skeins, skeins so, typically. Yeah, so yeah. It's a, So you get 75 yards of each of the colors right. and around a thousand of these too, a little right. bit more and a little bit less. But right. yeah. So I'm hot just holding it up, but I do love it. And even I'll show you like both sides blocked out lovely with the color work band because right. I you know you think that would be tricky you're going diagonally and to get everything looking so smooth I uh, love I'm, the style I'm very encouraged because when I get to the bands on the Joe Batsar yeah, right. and, yeah. and exactly. that's my one little yeah nervous, and this so. lace pattern was just so much fun and it's so beautiful mm -hmm. so um well done Jennifer Beal and she just put something on Instagram today but it was in her stories and it probably won't be there by the time you see this but she's done a tremendous number of designs sweater yeah. designs in the one year that yes. she's been a knitwear designer and they're all just beautiful yeah, it's crazy so it's very just one of and, many yeah Love and uh, yeah, so if you want to make that, it actually wasn't as challenging as the Ramia, I didn't find. The color work obviously just took a little bit of patience. Mm -hmm. It's quite a big uh, expanse round. that you're yeah. doing. It's a large round, yeah, yeah. so the rows individually took quite a time. But do you think it's maybe because you're the Ramia, you learned a lot while you did that? Like um, it was a bit challenging? Well, I think the Ramia was just more uh, lace for oh, okay. a longer period of time oh, okay. like a little bit less broken up and uh, the construction i would say was a little bit more complicated okay yeah yeah then this actually is a very easy construction oh okay. i mean it's diagonal but other yes. than that there's nothing to it yeah yeah well, that's good and like we keep saying she, her patterns are so well written yeah that, uh, like remember on the ram yeah i knit those in the round i steep them you flatten yeah. them out then you take it from there that yeah. was for each sleeve right. so this is just like pretty straightforward oh, okay. in fact yeah yeah it's beautiful yeah yeah and very different when you're you know you see so many sweater designs yeah. that all start to look the same yeah. so yeah great right. and no it's completely unique and beautiful i love right. it i can't wait till it's cold enough to wear it <laughs> <laughs> well Actually, next week it's supposed to be below normal Wonderful. temperatures. Okay, yeah, not so sure. There we go. <laughs> he won't mow here below, yeah. but yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. 
<laughs> so, um, and now do we want to do your, your whip? Sure, I'll do my whip. So, yes. good grief. So, I would have been done this. <laughs> right. Well, first of all, this is called whip and rip for a reason, right? <laughs> so, you know, I never learn. I don't know how this happened, but I, I was, I knit it. You were done. I went down a needle size, okay? Because I typically knit loose and I thought it's a one size fits all. I'll just go down a needle size and not swatch. No big deal. <laughs> then I knit strictly to the pattern. Bound it off. It's top down. Didn't bother to try it on. Too lazy to put a longer cord on here to actually see if I like the length before I bound it off. Stupidest thing ever. Oh. So, well, that's a big statement from my knitting experience. But uh, it was way too short. All right. Okay, so I actually doubled the length, the distance now that you knit from here to here before you do the ribbing. Oh, okay. So I ripped all my ribbing out. I ripped out my bind off and all my ribbing. And then I increased the stockinette to 20 centimeters from the 10 that were called for in the pattern. And now I'm back on the ribbing. And I honestly, it goes so fast. I ab And then I just have the sleeves. I yeah. absolutely would have been able to finish it. But, you forgot. but I was rushed to trying to get out of here to make the fairy, and I was the very last car to get on. Right. Very last. They squoze me in, squeezed me in. Squoze. That's a good. That's <laughs> a good. Me in. <laughs> the bottom behind all the um, tractor trailers, yeah. like just out of sheer pity, I'm sure. And uh, so I almost missed it, in fact. And uh, we Belfasters like to wait to the last minute to get the fairy because it's so close, but you really can't do it's that. It's further than you think. I, think I always I think it late, takes 15 but, minutes, well, it but it's, well, it's more like 20. Yeah. Well, it's it's peak touristy driving. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I was the very last car they squeezed on because I also have a very small car. And uh, anyway, didn't put the knitting in the, in, the, in the suitcase. I looked at the knitting. In my mind, it went in the suitcase. <laughs> so after that, I put in a measuring tape, crochet hook. Don't want to not have a crochet hook in case I make a mistake. <laughs> Extra stitch markers. The needles that the short needles that I needed to do the sleeves, my pen that I like to all that was in the suitcase. The sweater was not in the suitcase. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's kind of like the forest. Something about the forest for the trees. Right. Kind of thing. I can't imagine, <laughs> and I was so disappointed. Anyway, so I, that was like a lot of days missed knitting for me, and I had already taken a couple days break after I finished the Barrachois just to kind of like you know get my life we're, back. We're, and I actually haven't played piano and I'm really missing it. So I need to d just dial back on the knitting yeah. a little bit now that I've got that big project done. But yeah, so that's... Um, and what are you going to do next? <sighs> do you know? I'm not 100% sure. Oh. I haven't... There's a number of sweaters I want to knit. Another sweater? It'll be a sweater. Okay. Or maybe a tank top. Mm -hmm. I may do a quick tank top of Jennifer's. <laughs> she designed. Oh, okay. And uh, then I'm, I'm going to get back to my St. Lunaire, but I might wait till closer to the fall oh, to do yes. that one. I forgot you still have yeah. that. Yeah. And there's another um, sweater or two that I've wanted to make for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the queue another just gets longer and longer. Yeah. Oh, it's still, yeah, there's, I have, I don't know. Yeah. I just see what strikes me and what, yeah. it's too hard for me to think about that right. far in the future right now. Okay. So, um... So, so this will be done the next time. Well, yes. So it's really like we're turning a page. There, are the no more Barishois after this. Yeah. And now Ranunculus will yeah. be done, and then you'll be yeah. onto something else. So it's yeah, I'll exciting. do something quick again. I think. Yeah. Something a bit lighter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll do the Saint Lunaire. I'll probably start uh, first of September again, okay. or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Because that's really like you've done two big lace yeah. projects, three lace projects. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, so we have a shop update yeah. this time. So we have kind of a lot. A few things. Do, yeah, a few okay. things to do. So do you want to do the, uh, you wanted to show the greener shade, um, the inside of the kit. Yeah, so, so I realized I didn't do a great job of showing, and we sold a lot of these. So a lot yes. of people are interested in dying. I, I was know. very excited. I didn't know. And you know, everybody got a little postcard that said, if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. So I'm happy to help you get started. Yeah. Um, so I just want to show sort of what it looks like. So you've got your... Um, your pH lowering <laughs> citric acid in a bag here that comes with it. And then it comes, it's adorable. Yeah. Cause I'm like a sucker for cute stuff. Yeah. And these are just they so cute. Perfectly. Yeah. They fit in perfectly. Cause that's just great. Yeah. It wasn't perfect. Trust me. That's really <laughs> going out. 
And uh, yeah, so they come in little jars like this. I won't open it because it could take flight. They're very light and you should always wear a mask when you're using them, in fact, because you can inhale these. Um, so yeah, and you get all nine colors. And the colors are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, black, and an aqua or like a teal turquoise right. kind of color. That's the nine colors. So again, that's just your cute little kit that you get. Now, greener shades will tell you that you can dye up to 14 pounds of fiber with this kit. I would say you could actually do quite a bit more than that if you do some of the lighter shades oh. like I do, like Pearl and November Sky. You're using a fraction of what you would, would use because um, the typical depth of shade is sort of 1% and right. some of mine are a quarter of a percent. Right, the pastel. Um, um, yeah, the pastel one. So you actually can get quite a bit done with it. And uh, then you just mix them around and invent all your own colors and good fun so those are still up and available we just ordered more because we actually almost sold out right. um but we'll be we'll be in good shape because they've already shipped yeah and nobody's called to ask any questions so not we're yet assuming that it's going well yeah well i mean yeah. it's just not as scary as people think no you can't right. really screw it up well and the truth is even when you screw it up because it's not what you intended, you end up with something nice usually. Yeah, that's so how that's we ended right. up with 72 colors. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So the other thing we got that's quite fun and new, which if you get our newsletter, which you should also, could also subscribe to, yeah. um, you are, we've already seen these, but these are just some ceramic mugs we had made yeah. up with our logo on them. Um, and they look like a camp mug, but they are not the tin, tin mug. They're just as styled to look like a tin. Right. Like they're actually ceramic, so yes. I just want to be clear about that. I did put that on the listing as well. Right. And they're online, and uh, they're a, good, a nice 16 ounce. Yeah, we um, love them. Yeah. I just realized they're left-handed. Oh. So for all you lefties out there, or does it work opposite for mugs where you look at it yourself, maybe? That's weird. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Left? Maybe that's how you do it with a mug. I don't know. Maybe we were supposed to say which side we wanted it on. I don't know. Oh, let me see. Mug I'm experts sure. way in. I don't... I'm right-handed. I think I drink with both, though. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, it's just if you want other people to see the logo or if you want to stare yeah. at it yourself. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, look. they're quite heavy. Yes. And uh, I actually really, really like them. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that uh, we were expecting the enameled, like real camp yes. mugs to come. But um, some people have been already been saying, well, if it's ceramic, then you can heat up something in it. Like yeah. in a microwave, which we haven't tried, but I'm assuming that that's yeah. okay. And it is true, enamel on camp mugs actually chips. Right. So. Yeah. But it's such know, a cute be, look. Yeah. It is. So if look. that really uh, appeals. Yeah. It's kind of like a, it's a camp mug but it's not yes for that camp feeling all year long right <laughs> <laughs> but i think it weighs more than a tin mug yeah <laughs> so and then the next thing we have which i am so excited about because i really oh i'm gonna show they're them they're too cute yeah they're just too cute for words so uh these little tiny tin pill boxy things are so sweet this enamel is uh is it's enameled and we have um these ones are tulips and oh okay is it enamel or a resin oh uh, it's a resin yeah okay. but i think they consider it uh like an enameled resin yeah maybe enameling is this is the is the method of application i have I no don't idea know. okay there's something about enamel they're soft enamel and hard enamel right so there's something about that so maybe the yeah it's it's a resin okay anyway it's just actually they're beautiful uh we have a couple different designs um these are the tulips and then there's the pears and the inside um the tulip case has closed stitch markers so um they're just uh just regular stitch markers they're just and you can nice put and, all extra stuff in there. Yeah, you can. Yeah. There's tons of room to put more yeah. in. So there's ten close right. stitch markers, and they snap shut nice and securely. Yeah, they're really nice and secure. And the um, the pair has the uh, opening stitch markers, like the little uh, I don't know, like little safety pins, yeah. but without the you know what I mean, the yeah. opening. Oh, wow. Well, okay. You so be picking those yeah, after. <laughs> no, only one fell. Okay, <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, 
All right, now I'm really sweating. Yeah, it's uh, so hot. Okay. Yeah, okay. So they're just as sweet as anything. Yeah. And there's room to put the... Uh, so cute. More, more, I actually yeah. thought this was a lemon, but... No, it's, it's a, a pear. pear. I know. Yeah. Did you want I like lemon? lemons too, but... Oh, okay. <laughs> fine, it's a pear. Anyway, so we have that. Okay. So... Um, Those are all listed online. Yes. Yeah, so in accessories is where things like... Mug, any, everything that's not yarn goes under accessories. So if you're looking... Okay. And of course, I'll link to it in the show notes. But, right. Yeah. And when we... After we ordered them, uh, we ordered them from a company in California, and then we found out that they're actually made in... Canada. Yeah. So they're actually Canadian made. They're from British Columbia. Yes, yeah. exactly. So uh, we've been uh, talking with the, the lady that makes them because uh, I was like, well, she's Canadian. I'm going to have to write to her. So right. I did. And she's lovely. So uh, I, I think that there may be more. They're just adorable. They're, yeah. they're really nice. And okay. she does like all kinds of different like vintage designs and <laughs> stuff like that. What's going Don't. Is it getting bigger? Yeah. Okay. I tried parting it on the other side. Yeah. You might have noticed I look different. Uh-huh. Sure, they all Because <laughs> our hairdresser said that your hair will thin where you part. If you part yeah. your... All, so I'm doing it on the different... The only thing that I noticed is that I'm really in need of a touch-up on my okay. color and when I part it the other way, that it's my hair is is naturally light enough that it actually bleaches out in the sun, and the side's not oh, bleached out. Oh, you have out. to do it now. Yeah. Well, then you can do the zigzag part, which goes like this. Yeah. And then it hides the bottom. Right. Gray. I don't have time for that. Okay. All right. So <laughs> that's all the helpful so advice that. today. We're really like uh, just bab babbling on today. <laughs> okay. So okay. So that's uh, so that's actually it for the shop update. Right. So those three things. Oh, uh, now we have an exciting thing. Okay. Yes. So I the dye forgot. kits, and we've got these beautiful little tins and the cups and everything. So that's that. Right. So now we have an interview. Yes. Well, and we're really gosh. excited about this because yeah. we've already filmed the interview. So uh, we're interviewing, uh, we mentioned, we gave a little teaser in the last episode. Yeah. And uh, in this case, usually when we're talking local, we mean like hyper local. But this case, uh, there is a new um, farmer that moved to, uh, to Nova Scotia from British Columbia. And... Um, her name is Lisi Ohm, and she raises Icelandic horses, horses and cashmere goats. Yes. And so, so we sat down to have a chat with her. Right. Um, in less than perfect lighting conditions, so apologies in advance, but we could yeah. not do it here because we were open during the day and she yes. was here during the day. Yes. Um, but it's a great interview. And yes. then at the end, we're showing a little um, vignette of her, her goats. They're very cute. Yes, really cute. Yeah. And um, so you will notice there might be a little bit of shadowing because yeah. of the lighting, but uh, Lisi is, was absolutely delightful. And uh, so you're gonna see the interview for that, and I'm not saying her farm name because no. it's Icelandic, and I I didn't even bother trying to practice it because I knew right. that it was gonna be impossible. Yeah. So First. let's go. <laughs> let's go watch that now. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Hi everybody, it's Kim and Jen, and we have a special guest today, Lisi Ohm. And I'm not going to say the name of her farm because it's Icelandic, so I'm going to let her talk about that. But um, we alluded to the fact that we have something very special happening in the last episode, and the special happening is cashmere, and Lisi is the supplier of, uh, of our cashmere. So welcome, Lisi. Thank you. Uh, we're, we were so excited when you called us because yeah. you can't get cashmere local mm -hmm. and we're all about spinning as local as possible mm -hmm. so your farm is in nova scotia so i'll just ask you to uh, introduce your your farm mm -hmm. and i know that you don't just do cashmere you also have uh, horses so you can just talk oh. a little bit about uh, about what you do and maybe how you ended up in nova scotia <laughs> yeah this <laughs> lucky is for us <laughs> yeah very okay. lucky this is a little bit of a crazy story. First of all, I'm an Icelandic horse breeder, so this is where the farm name comes from, Vinstalo Icelandic Horse Farm. And I always had an affinity to fiber and used to spin and such a thing. So, long story short, eventually, living in British Columbia, we started a small farm for Kashmir goats because I thought these fit very well with our Icelandic horses goats and horses graze well together and Kashmir goats are in many ways the same hardiness what I love in Icelandic horses they strive in cold miserable weather stuff like <laughs> this well you know there's yeah. also goats which are very sensitive and these guys are not they're really 
uh, hardy, they can handle rough temperatures, that's where they produce their fiber. And also, as much as I like goats, they are easy in keeping because I don't need to tend to them all the time. We are brushing the goats out once a year. It's not a shearing process, it's a brushing. And the goats actually really quite enjoy it. I bet. So, <laughs> because this is at the time of their life when they want to get rid of the underhair anyway, so the cashmere is the fine underhair, and they would start to rub on trees and such. So, if I'm standing there and brushing, you can tell that they say, like, oh, this feels good. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, that's an important, uh, <laughs> important point is that you're actually brushing yeah. everything, there's no shearing no. Uh, involved. No. So, um, from a spinning Mm -hmm. uh, aspect that's probably also adds to the softness even though cashmere mm -hmm. is already very fine and soft but the fact that you don't have any blunt cut ends actually no. even makes the fiber yeah, even softer. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What we have to pay attention to is this window of opportunity for the goat to shed their hair and each one is different so you need to figure a little bit out like oh yeah this one lets go and this one doesn't because there's a dark cloud in the sky or it gets really cold and all of a sudden they don't let go because they're smart oh, okay. so and then there's this window of time when we are brushing and all of a sudden the under hair aka cashmere comes out if you're too late it's too much guard hair and okay. the guard hair doesn't have the fine crimping you are asking for right. so, yeah. yeah so and the guard hair for us we take that all out yeah. of the yeah. fiber anyway yeah. so obviously um, double coated animals yeah. whatever they are with fiber if they have a guard hair and mm -hmm. they have a have an undercoat then um, most times we want to take the guard hair out yeah. except for Icelandic sheep actually oh so do, right. yes, want to yeah. leave some yeah. of it yeah. in yeah. so uh, so that's great that you're able to kind of adjust how you're gonna how you're gonna gather the fiber mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. there's less guard hair yeah it yeah it a little bit easier for us so yeah. that's good yeah and it's interesting we will be and we are a small producer, so I'm not going to brush out a hundred goats. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it will be uh, even in Nova Scotia where we just moved from BC, and now in in the Maritimes, I was lucky enough to find a mill who was actually producing because that was always the hindering in British Columbia or in this area in the West. There are no mills. Mm -hmm. And that means we were always catering to small hand spinning situations. So now there's this possibility of having a mill mixing it and that allows me to become maybe a little bit bigger in my production but without becoming huge. Yeah. So. And of course we were thrilled. Mm -hmm. Can we okay. interest you in silkworms? Kashmir, this is as good as it gets okay, for me. Okay, well, so, we'll yeah. take it. Yeah. So yeah. how many goats do you have? We right now have four does and a bunch of little ones. And uh, when we moved from BC to Nova Scotia just a year ago, this is really, really, really fresh, uh, we took our best producers with us. So the producers which I liked the most. Uh, very fine crimping, very, very abundance, lots of fiber, this is nice and a certain length which makes it easy so uh, we took a very high quality buck with us and um, he has a bunch of babies this year so which are staying all all the female babies stay with us and then we also purchased another very very well bred black buck who oh. is already he's still a baby but he already has a lot of gray cashmere and oh. it looks spectacular oh. so the gray one I hope to introduce a little bit more into our breeding that we have the really really white and the gray stuff so yeah. let's see where it goes yeah. and yeah I'm pretty sure we are brushing out about 12 next January, February, March, something like okay. that. Okay, neat. Okay. I love the gray. It would be, it, it would be pretty it's dyed. It's silvery. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and it would yeah. be just gorgeous, 100% yeah. on its own in yeah. a sweater. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm quite excited about it. So, that. yeah. <laughs> so when uh, we purchased the fiber that we did for this special mm -hmm. spin, we purchased 16 ounces or mm -hmm. one pound. Mm -hmm. So was that the, and that wasn't quite your full production. You had a no. little bit more. I, yeah, I do have a little bit more. I sell some privately to hand spinners. Right. 
but uh, it depends a little bit how much you can use where yeah. I'm going with how much goats I'm going to keep and yeah. how much goats I'm going to keep brushing out so the goat bucks are limited in the brushing possibility because once they get into breeding season they get excited and pee on themselves oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> Not so good. There is a there's a stench involved, like yeah. hello albos, yeah. and we only can use then the top part of his oh, uh, fiber because the rest of it is really really so. Right now you would not be able to tell his smell, but comes breeding season that is going to happen. So basically we try to keep as many females as possible, mm -hmm. and then they just have babies and also produce cashmere. So Ooh, and I can see, I have six babies to brush out uh, January, February, March and of course the very first Kashmir uh, harvest or brushing is the best. Oh, okay. That's so nice. they, alre they already start to have Kashmir. Yes. You can see that they're already having a little bit of fine stuff. One is cream colored and it's like so cool. Yummy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so and then when you, uh, we've talked about this, so mm -hmm. uh, when you um, have the, the chance to expand, how what do you think is the capacity that you'll be able to get to realistically since you are brushing everything by all your animals by hand? I would, I would think of, um, let's think, three kilos. Oh, okay. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. So our I'm eyes light up. Bing! Yeah. <laughs> a process to get there but yes I am going to to breed to, uh, to come to a certain amount of, okay. of production Great. but it, as I said it is also what you guys can use you yes. know if you say like, okay we are swamp with cashmere stop it yeah. I will <laughs> so, no, I'm, I have a I funny feeling that's so. not going to happen <laughs> if, uh, right yeah. if Angora yeah. from bunnies is any indication yeah. I don't think uh, cashmere yeah. is going to be a problem yeah. so we'll see oh. how it, how it yeah, goes yeah we can handle that no problem fantastic yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so this is this is easily done yeah. so because goats multiply fast yeah, they do. Yeah. Sheep too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You gotta keep on top of it. Yeah. Building up the numbers is yeah. not the problem. No. So having two bucks from totally different breeding lines allows me now, of course, also to say like, okay, I can keep the daughters, and I can reproduce yes. with them. So this was my idea, you know. Yeah. And I was lucky to find a really well-bred yeah. buck. So yeah. yeah. Oh, good. the gray sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. 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 We yeah. love to uh, overdye on colored, yeah. colored fleeces. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, most people assume that white is you know that's all that a mm -hmm. that a producer like a yarn producer would want but mm -hmm. for us it's mm -hmm. uh, we actually breed black uh, lambs into our yeah, flock yeah, because yeah. we like the effect of over dyeing mm -hmm. uh, on colored yeah, uh, things yeah, yeah. and the same with the angora rabbits mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. have silvery gray so mm -hmm. yeah ooh, that might be yeah ooh, angora cashmere mm -hmm. wow mm -hmm. I'll <laughs> <laughs> um, when living in BC, as I said, I was producing a lot for a uh, hand spinner and a friend of mine had alpacas. Okay. And alpaca is also a luxury fiber, so you think like, how can I improve alpaca? Right. It's fantastic. Yeah. She sometimes blended cashmere in it and it even improves the alpacas to a degree where it's like, oh my god. Yeah. It's really, really yeah. lovely. So since you also have alpacas, that might be something right. to play with. Yeah, well, so, yeah, yeah. we do purchase alpaca yeah. fiber yeah. on the yeah. island here. Yeah, yeah there's certainly yeah. Uh, it's available. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, now everybody is seeing how we enter the rabbit hole mm -hmm. and then fall down, <laughs> fall down into something that we had no idea was going to happen. So it's happening. Yeah. 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 This, is, this is it. You're seeing it live. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 One, one thing what I was not sure of when I moved from BC, BC climate has of course totally different features than Nova Scotia. Yeah. And uh, the goats produce the fiber according to the temperatures. Oh. And uh, I was not sure how the fiber would turn out in the maritimes mm -hmm. and i was really really happily surprised oh, so this, it's it's awesome yeah. and our goats live in an in and out large barn so it's not a heated barn mm -hmm. so they have a shelter from wind and rain but if it's 20 below it's 20 below right you right. know and actually they're faring very well right. i was a little bit concerned that the more moisture in the air would affect it, but mm -hmm. no, I'm, I'm right. quite happy. Oh, so, yeah, and production. when we say BC for people who aren't oh, familiar with Canada, Columbia. it's British Columbia, yeah, which, okay. is the, oh, which is the exact opposite yeah. end of the country we're sitting yes. in, like yeah. East Coast, West Coast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we moved with five goats on the truck. Uh, we oh. were a little bit of a 
roadside attraction. <laughs> yes, I bet, I bet. Yeah. So, Some funny stories. <laughs> yeah, I wonder, I wonder um, to your point about the weather, if the, I'm, I'm not sure where you were, we're in British Columbia, mm-hmm. where you were located, but the, I would imagine that it's also colder where you are in Nova Scotia than yeah. it was in BC. But, uh, no, depend, no, okay. no, it is windier and wetter. Oh, and okay. as I said, the, the climate is a lot more snow and uh, really quite cold in the winter time, also dry summer. Right. And as I said, the amount of more moisture and more wind and rain, mm-hmm. I was not sure how the goats would produce, but mm-hmm. they handle it excellent. And mm-hmm. it, of course, makes a cold climate. So apparently it's not influencing their fleece. So. Well, that's a, that's a really good point because mm-hmm. that's part, part, was part of the issue with people trying to raise uh, Angora goats. Here oh yeah, because yeah, of okay. the dampness, yeah. they were actually it was hard to harvest the fiber yeah. before mm-hmm. it became uh, matted because of the humidity. Yeah. So it's okay. really uh, it's really good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's completely different fiber, but mm-hmm. it's uh, really great that you didn't run into that. No, uh, yeah, that dampness problem. is a challenge with all yeah fiber yeah. Right? fiber animals and humans. Like yeah. people, yeah. I I lived in Alberta for a bit. It's very mm-hmm. dry, mm-hmm. cold, mm-hmm. and people mm-hmm. say, "What is it? Dry, cold, cold? It's cold." Mm-hmm. No, no, it's not. If, no. You, if you go out in a dry wool sweater or a wet wool sweater yeah. you will feel different <laughs> yeah. it's the same yeah. temperature yeah. Yeah. you know it's no, that's very, very different yeah. and Matt's fiber we yeah. even find the difference between our, our renegade bunny Paige who's yes. in here yeah. almost never needs to be brushed her yeah. fiber okay. just grows out dry and beautiful yeah. and silky mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. ones out out in a in a barn sort of building where mm-hmm. it's much more damp mm-hmm. they mat very quickly interesting yeah. 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 yeah 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 so I guess more it's a little bit like the dumb farmer lark. Uh, I think our setup we built for the goats work well. So right. not perfect. perfect. Well, because it's open to one side, yes. you know, yeah, so yeah. that uh, there's always a breeze. It's very cool in the summer. They have shade, but uh, other than that, they're living a little bit the uh, the happy goat life right. yes. because they get roaming all over the yeah. farm, yeah. and you said, yeah, I'm eating over there. Yes, so, right. yes. perfect. So, yeah. well, okay. That's what we the same. Uh, practices we subscribe to as yeah, well right. so yeah. uh, we know that it works for our yeah. sheep so yeah, yeah. 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 excellent so um, I that's this is just a little short introduction. Mm-hmm. So we'll be uh, showing the yarn. Uh, we're not ready to show the yarn mm-hmm. yet because mm-hmm. we're filming this. I uh, felt it. It felt amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's made. It's yeah. made, but it's not done yeah. yet. Yeah. So um, while we're uh, while we're um, showing the interview, we'll mm-hmm. probably show pictures and that kind oh, of thing. So yeah, yeah, we'll be drooling over it mm-hmm. in, in real time on our next part yeah. of our recording. Yeah. 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 I feel very, very lucky to have a chance to meet with you guys and uh, send you my cashmere. So this mm-hmm. is really cool because it allows me to grow as a producer. So yeah, this is fantastic. That's, yeah. that's what we love. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you for coming sure, to see us. Yeah, yeah, and we're sure we'll have an appreciative audience. As Definitely. Well. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hopefully. Yeah. 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 Okay, so great. Uh, Lisi, we give everybody a hug. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we met you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Bye. 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 So that was good. Yeah, so fun. It was yeah. fun having her. Yes, yeah. yes, she was delightful. Very dynamic. So, <laughs> yes. So I just about fell off my chair when she said three kilos. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So <laughs> room to room to expand because actually what we got uh, this time was sixteen ounces. Yeah. Which is uh, so it's a, a small amount, but she's uh, just starting out and yeah. they brought their best animals with them. So uh, so we're really looking forward to that. And I mean, it's unbelievable when you, when you, um, takes quite a lot of work actually, because it's a, uh, the goats are dual coated, but when you put your hands in that cashmere, Ooh. it's just unbelievable. Oh. So of course we have a yarn yeah. that we made and it's a blend of 15% cashmere with our wool because I had a limited quantity and I wanted to, to use it. And it's a bit of a... A bit of an experiment because we haven't blended with cashmere because you can't get local cashmere. So it's uh, 250 yards for 75 grams. So it's quite a fine yarn. Um, it's it was amazingly white. Mm-hmm. The the color of it is beautiful. It's just got this little tiny hint of like a, um, 
I don't know how to describe it. It's not really super lustrous, but it has this little bit of a white, uh, like the luster. And so it really shows off in a variegated, uh, a variegated skein like this. So, which we'll call petals. Yeah. So I wanted to knit something with it, but I'm, so I did a swatch, but we wanted to be able to suggest a pattern. So what we did was we went back through our Lina magazines because we carry Lina in the shop. So if you want, uh, if you're looking for Lina magazines, we have every uh, every issue. Yes, that they've up done to now. eight now. Yeah, 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 up to issue eight. Yeah. So I found um, in the the second um, issue, which is this one, if you're looking for them. Uh, Andrea Mowry did a, a shawl in here called Birds of a Feather. Yeah. So it has mohair strips and it has uh, a leather lightweight yarn where you do garter. It's a garter. It's a very simple pattern. So I took our um, kid sill case and I have, I'm swatching. So not really fair to show a shawl when you haven't blocked it, but it's not, uh, it's not been blocked yet. So I just want to make sure I have the right side. Can't see because I don't have it. Okay, so it goes this way. So I'm in love with this. It and really it's great. called just Birds of a Feather. So yeah. can see, yeah. And if you just hold it out, so you've got this really fine, um, beautiful fabric with the kid silk haze and then the uh, cashmere and we'll have a picture of yeah. it. And we um, need two of each to make this? Yes. Two skeins of the petals and two skeins of the kid silk case. case. Okay. So I really made a big debate over what color to do the, the, the mohair panel because we ha I had three choices. I had the cream, which is what I ended up doing, but I was really tempted by the shadow, which is like a very soft, mm -hmm. soft mauve. That would be pretty too. That would be really nice and it matches perfectly. Mm -hmm. And then I went on Ravelry and I looked at a couple of examples and people had done um, darker stripes as well. So the um, mulberry, which we also have in stock, would be another really great alternative. Mm -hmm. Just hold so, it up so that we yeah. make sure the angle's good. Yeah. Yeah. Neat. So either, either one of these, you know, the... Just depends on the look you want. Yeah, just depends. Yeah. This will be more monochromatic yeah. with the shadow. Yeah. This is more contrasting yeah. with the mulberry, and then the, the cream is, is neutral. Yeah. So we have that. So I said that there was something else happened while you yeah. were here. <laughs> so now I'm going to tell you what happened. Okay. Okay. So I've been carrying this around. I bring my knitting to the shop every day because often I have to do like little knitting demonstrations on, on stitches to help people out and stuff. So I actually had um, my birds of a feather shawl done to this part right here, like this. Okay. Yeah. So Ken came back to the back of the, <laughs> in the mill and he said, uh, I'm not sure if you should leave your knitting lying around like that or not. And I said, what do, you, what do you mean? And he said, well, there was a customer just in and she picked up your knitting and said, what is your wife knitting? A bikini? <laughs> so first of all, a cashmere mohair bikini. Okay. So then my mind went really, really far down the hole because how do you think, where do you think this would hit? The see-through part. So, and what kind of a gusset is that? <laughs> I, I couldn't work for the rest of the day. I was just, you know, when you hear something and then it just keeps, it just keeps coming back to you during the day. I was laughing all day. So I don't know what that customer's name was, but thank you. Oh God, because, what? No. So it's not a bikini. Can you see? <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Oh my God. It would fit just like this. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> Nothing like a fur bikini. <laughs> To hide all your lady bits. Uh, yeah. 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 It wouldn't hide much. No. 
No. Anyway, uh, however, I have to say, it hadn't occurred to me that that would be what it was, but I have a funny feeling that that's all that I'm going to see every time yes, I look at it. Especially until, until block it's blocked. And everybody else who makes it now. Yeah. So there you go. <clears throat> if you want a mohair cashmere bikini, bikini <laughs> you just have to adapt the, the <laughs> birds of a feather. <laughs> I'm sure Andrea Mallory will be very proud. <laughs> Sorry, Andrea. <laughs> anyway, it, it is actually, all kidding aside, it's been just great to knit this. I really yeah. am enjoying it. In fact, I haven't done that much on my Joe Bads. Right. Because oh, this dear. is just fun. And I got this done. I actually got this done at knit night. However, I ended up with a wrong stitch count somehow and had to rip, of course, oh, because it wouldn't be that night if there wasn't ripping, but I got right back on track. Okay. So I'm really loving this. It goes really fast. Yeah. Too. Great. So will that be so, done by next time? I, I would think so. Oh, that would be amazing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Actually, okay. yes. Great. <laughs> I was being sarcastic. <laughs> Great. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, two so. of each. And as typical, in typical fashion, I now have mohair on my face, which yeah. is sticking because I'm so sticky. Yeah. Okay. So do you want to see the bikini again? No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just also kind of rounded right here. Okay. Yeah. Put it away. <laughs> it's a little bit of a patch. <laughs> Put it away. <laughs> it's unisex. I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's enough of that. Okay. <laughs> Just put that away. So, and on that note. <sighs> okay. So. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Do you want to see it again? No. No. Okay. I'm good now. <laughs> All right. So that's that's it. That's the that's the episode for today. Oh yeah, but oh, and also the yarn. Join our Ravelry. Group. Yes. yes. Join our Ravelry. If group. you're on Ravelry, we have a group. Yes. And we do. I don't know what do we do in there. We do all kinds of. We yes, we post always podcast. Yeah. We do ask us anything and uh, just other chats mm -hmm. and things. There's a place to post your part yeah. projects. Yeah. Oh, and I was supposed to create a dying thread. No wonder oh. no one's asked a question. Oh. I'll create that now we okay. <laughs> promise okay yeah so uh so uh yes so you can uh you can find us there join us and, over there if yeah. you're into ravelry yeah and, and yeah that's as it. always we're loving all the comments on yeah. the youtube always channel fun. yeah I, some of them are great yeah, yeah. really interesting yeah. they're funny really, hilarious yes yeah and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Yes. If you like what you see, we'd love to see you subscribe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Okay. So we'll say so a hot, hot sticky night. goodbye. Yeah. Hot sticky goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.